Welcome back to the Back to the Future DVD commentary track for episode four, Double Visions. I'm Mike Stemley, designer. I'm Andy Hartzell, designer. Uh, Dennis Lenart, cinematics. And um, everyone else has passed out from, you know, from eating too much pizza. pizza and, <laughs> and, uh, kind of uh, wish our director was here for this episode. <laughs> this episode was directed by our studio creative head, Where Dave Grossman. Hey. Yay! Dave is out playing bocce tonight. <laughs> and the entire thing from concept to playtest, 48 hours, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We originally had this whole uh, insanely huge uh, uh, Citizen Plus Ward sequence, and we eventually boiled it down to this nice little tight, paranoid little... Uh, Kept the focus on, on Doc and the, the unbearable tortures that he's undergoing. Yeah. I missed the maze, though. <laughs> It seemed cool, like, like a cool idea. Yes, we had a we had a, a maze of rooms, but I think we ended up with a really cool look. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I think it was Kim. Yeah, who, yeah. yeah, Kim Lyons, who you know originally suggested you know make it a circle and put Doc in the middle. And, and there was a lot of uh, talk about the design of this place. So was it were we going to go toward the the happy bright? Look, were we going to go toward the grungy prison look? Were we just going to go for the antiseptic look? And we we finally came down here. Something that's modern but still forbidding. Citizen Plus. Oh no, Jen, not you too. And Jen's been turned into Stepford Teen. You're gonna like. At least I hope you still do. And then Jen is saved with the power of rock. Very important. This also was there. there um, originally, there was going to be a huge rock and roll uh, '80s uh, montage kind of uh, kind of puzzle where where everybody was freed with the power of rock, and and uh, as so many things, it was concentrated down. <laughs> Yay, spinny camera! Yes. What's going on here? I and no idea, sir. I was minding my own business when all of a sudden a horrible noise started coming out of that camera. Well, that's not right. <laughs> yeah, well, neither is this. <laughs> <laughs> my brain, you hear the, me? The original director's notes suggested that she needs to, she was supposed to... <laughs> Kick him in the ribs. And that was uh, that was a line that was an homage to Rock and Roll High School. Yeah, right. which is one of my favorite movies that I haven't seen in ten years. The but. character of. Oh God! Oh come on! Oh, come on. <laughs> oh. it's PJ Souls playing. Walk out of here. I can't remember. Her name. Oh, that's horrible. Calvin Klein underwear, really? <laughs> That's horrifying. What was that? But he kind of deserves it for marrying her. Yeah. Get my friend out of here, you nutcase. Oh. All right, let's try it one more time. A than I'd expected. Originally, the uh, guitar chord was supposed to blast the uh, tape rolling table out of the room, and then we realized that made no yeah, sense. Yeah, we went we so went to a hospital and tried it, and it just, just didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even in the Back to the Future world, that made no sense. <laughs> and we've almost <laughs> left the alt dystopian. Uh, 1980s. There was originally a uh, a pu- little a puzzle with a final co- confrontation with Edna out here, which involved being trapped behind this gate. But we never got it to work, and <laughs> it never it never was a good puzzle. And uh, we eventually said, "No, let's not. Let's just hide them in trash cans instead." Which is funny. All storyboarded out by our director Dave. This yeah. was all his uh, addition. 
Yeah. Hey. Don't talk to her. She could give us away. We decided to shorthand the entire reconciliation of uh, George and Lorraine and Panama yes. and <laughs> beat up two guards at once. Because we always knew that George had it in him. And then they're going to get dragged away and have their brains uh, sucked out. Because we can't believe that this reality is at all redeemable. We have to go back and, uh, and fix things. Yeah. The double punch was something that I never thought would make it into the game. I just did that for playtest. Oh, really? Yeah. People saw it and were like, let's just leave that in. Yeah. <laughs> it was one of the very early uh, gags we wanted to get in was was uh, Citizen Brown leaving and then coming back just a couple minutes later, having gone off and spent the rest of his family fortune to fix the DeLorean. And we were going to leave the player just uh, standing there, not knowing what to do, and force them to wander around aimlessly for two minutes before yeah. Doc got back, and then we remembered that we liked the players. He gets to kiss her off for the first time. He's looking to get to kiss her off a few times. How do you traipsing around 1931 in that ridiculous outfit? Wait, our I was so angry with Edna here, and then I made her sympathetic in the cutscene at this part. I thought it was too funny, and I could keep like cut it out. I mean, well, she's gonna get overwritten. Yeah. <laughs> Several times. I run this town. Okay. <laughs> Circuit set for August 26, 1931. You ready to go? And are we going to fly? Are we going to fly? Is this our first flight? No. Wait a minute, we've we've flown already, haven't we? Yeah, these yeah. <laughs> we flew. That, this car will never fly again. Oh, that's right. Yes. <laughs> And now we get to really reverse the roles. This is where Doc gets to gets to have his moment of amazement at time travel, which we've never gotten to see in any of the movies. He's yeah. always been a veteran. Yeah. yeah. And then we reveal. Will you look at that? The old town theater. You've got to get young you to see Frankenstein. <laughs> This, I think, was the, 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 this was really Christopher Lloyd's big episode. This is the episode where he gets to be all over the map. Yeah. Although five is, as well. But yeah, he gets to, you know, get the joy of uh, doing time travel for the first time, slowly building up uh, his uh, ambiguous uh, feelings about, uh, you know, uh, screwing up his relationship with Edna. Yeah. You're a little hard to pin down yourself. I went looking for you last night, but... I believe I and this is where we begin to realize something's not quite right. Uh, uh, you know, I never really got a chance to thank you. Well, I'm sure you we think we've just come a few hours uh, after we left, but how could uh, Edna's relationship have progressed this far in a few hours? Which reminds me, I'd better skedaddle back to the lab. If Edna catches me dawdling, there'll be heck to pay. Catch you around, Callahan. October 12th. And that's the way he really talks, too, yes. James Arnold Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we were originally going to have the uh, Hill Valley Expo taking place in the uh, center of town, just like everything else in the game uh, up to this yeah. point. And then we finally realized right. we have to we have to show some other sets. Um, yeah. And the high school was the one big set from the movies that was not yet represented. Yeah. So we decided that the Hill School, the high school, had just been finished, and that uh, we would set it there. Better get the Glorian out of sight before someone. Hey, you! Quit blocking it dry. All car of the future contestants need to report to the North Tent. Uh, he was he was just a bit uh, 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 an extra in episode two, and he wound up being an actual character. Yes. <laughs> now, the one thing we were real happy with is we ended Marion. up with a. B R O W N. It's not that's exactly interesting. A uh, very uh, good silly uh, puzzle with involving the time machine. We hadn't quite ever come up with a tri good trivial use of time travel until this episode, and the whole idea of uh, using the 
DeLorean to go back six hours to age a random chemical was... Uh, yeah, scary. it was an idea that we figured would not would not survive. But, but I think uh, yeah. Bob Gale liked it. Did I think Dennis didn't hate it. it. Yeah, <laughs> oh, the, yeah and I think it was the, uh, the previous version that we were... Not happy. Oh, it was a time leak. Oh, yes, leak. that's yeah. right. Uh, yeah, the, the that was not gonna fall. <laughs> yeah, no, but I like this idea. It's cool. Think the Hill Valley of the Future, or the or no, uh, oh, sorry, the, the aging the yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah, my future wouldn't be built so shoddily. <laughs> I'm a stripper. I was just break what you like, Mr. Callahan. It's no skin off my nose. Just keep away from Emmett's booth. Emmett. Our cameo of Kid. <laughs> yeah, Tenons uh, don't don't have huge roles in the in the final episodes. Mind map of Mr. Tannen for our exhibition at the Expo. The authorities wouldn't allow Edna and I to stage a demonstration of the mental alignment meter with a violent. Edna and me. <laughs> Had this. This puzzle started out being insanely complicated. The whole uh, and manipulate kind of emotions, and we we ratcheted it down to something that was eminently doable. And plus, shocking people's always funny. Um, and we got a good use out of uh, Vice Principal uh, Young Vice Principal Strickland's uh, picture again. All right. Yeah. Um, mm, that smells. And we got to foreshadow Beauregard Tannen. Yeah, at the last minute. <laughs> and at considerable expense. And uh, having more sexy pictures of Trixie. <laughs> its mind map is as bad as Tannen's. There was um, a little bit of um, war back and forth with, with Bob Gale coming up with uh, kind of pinning this invention down because it, it was important that nothing that he invents can can really work and it, and it can't seem like uh, with Edna he's able to suddenly invent things that he wouldn't otherwise be able to invent so it had to be something that was um, low tech and didn't really work very well or didn't or didn't break any new scientific ground he basically he invents a he invents a low budget version of the e-meter yeah. uh, got you to turn on kid tannin you bet you look younger without your mustache listen i've got a proposal for you i have this friend right no dice I'm only so this also was um, a very different puzzle initially, which involved uh, dressing Trixie up to resemble the cover of a of basically a, an amazing uh, fantasy thing, and we eventually were rightfully backed away from the absurdity of that, and actually got to a place where there's a, a lot more kind of drama with yeah. with Trixie and, and getting it playing Trixie and Edna off against each other are the Hill Valley's two women in 1931 <laughs> uh, very different women and actually getting them into conflict no tell you what I'll tell you something embarrassing we uh, we realized something very we finally found a good scandalous thing for Trixie that I think even I don't think we realized at the time was gonna play in nicely into the fifth episode did it play nicely in the fifth episode? Oh, yeah. Her scandal? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm so happy with that yep. postcard. <laughs> <laughs> because I, because it's very important that uh, Marty see Trixie Trotter naked for the final episode. We, we knew we wanted that. <laughs> what is it, Audie? You know I don't like to pry. And suddenly her accent goes from Brooklynese to uh, to Canadian. American. <laughs> and she does say the muse of progress. That's the tip off that she's Canadian. She doesn't say progress. If you're really a Canadian, we don't know whether or not this is proper law at all. But Hill Valley exists in this weird place. <laughs> Oh. I'm glad somebody's listening to reason. Ah, oh, poor Trixie. We could really, really like Trixie. Let's is she talk. wearing arm warmers? Mm. <laughs> wearing what? Arm warmers. It looks like she's wearing <laughs> elbow warmers. That's not all the muses wear. And once again, Marty, Marty 
starting to fix things here has actually accelerated the problem here where Emmett decides that he's gonna marry Edna tonight. Ask Edna to marry me right now. No. Oh, right, right. I'll wait until tonight at the expo. It'll be much more romantic that way. Just think. Oh, this no, it won't. Edna and I will be engaged <laughs> and will be the toast of the scientific community. And so this, this, uh, you know, in, in many ways is the climax of the of the whole uh, of of the whole season. This is where we knew it was all. Yes, yes. It was all heading toward. And uh, we, we wanted we wanted the the climactic moment to be suitably uh, suitably spectacular. To be honest, she ends up kind of. This was another tentpole we realized when we wanted this episode. But as we were designing it, we realized we had to have Citizen Brown turn on Marty. Um, you know, he spent the entire episode. He's seen this the younger version of Edna, who's not completely not so cuckoo bananas and you know wants to change her uh Wait, and get make sure that young emmett can Why be with him and like everything else in alt 1986 he's ultimately just not right <laughs> <laughs> hmm. that's weird that's an interesting cut <laughs> So as the relationship between Marty and old Doc hits its low point, the relationship with young Doc is about to also hit its low point. I guess I've got a mild case of stage fright. I'm about to play my big scene, you know? No telling how Edna's gonna react. You've uh, got something on your suit. Oh, so I have. And... There's a, it's, and for good reason it hits a low point because Marty's really <laughs> just being fairly horrible to him. And he didn't really have to go this far I if he mean, wanted to break them up. He didn't yeah. have to completely humiliate him, but, uh, but you know. Yeah, it's one of the, uh, it was a bit of a gamble this whole second act. Um, the usual way you do these three part puzzles is to uh, get through one part and all the way through and have someone say, now I need to do Y and Z to get this. So we had to, but in this case, we really wanted everything to just come together suddenly at the end of the act. Yeah, that's some major league texture work there. We can try this all over again. Lathrop Brown. How do you know this woman? I don't. I mean, I listened to some of her records, and I may have taken a picture or two of her, but. Wow. Yeah. I love it when a plan comes together like this. All too well. What is going on here? You rich boys are all alike. You think material She missed her calling as an actress. Yeah. Heart. Well, you can take back I like your Edna's hair. sneering look that always looks like she's smelling dying. something bad. <laughs> <laughs> you need your expensive presents. I need you. And more importantly, little Emmett Jr. needs you. <gasps> What? <laughs> Edna me. Apparently you are. Now was that that was the first piece of art that was it was it Gray do that? Was that one of our new artists? I can't remember what he started on. I think that may have been our yeah. our new concept artist Gray. Let me see that card. Who amazingly came on and was able to jump right into the style with his first drawing. Yeah. yeah. It was pretty great. Pretty great. I like the fact that they've got hooligan and layabout in there. <laughs> the 1931 version of Slacker. Let's get out of my sight! I never want to oh, see you no. again. For several hours. That was <laughs> rough, Emmett. I'm sorry you had to go through it, but things are gonna be okay. You and me can. Go to you and I. <laughs> that went off great, huh? Yeah, maybe too great. Emmett. And if he was an asshole to uh, Emmett before, now he gets to just be even worse. Yeah. It's, uh, Emmett. One of the things that uh, I really like about this episode is that the 
genuine climax final puzzle. It's not so much the action part at the end, but the you know, nice, solid, old-fashioned, dramatic dialogue puzzle. You know, we we work out, you know, where we get Sorry, Emmett to the folks. point that he's needed to get to me, Emmett. from exactly episode one, and get him to stand up for himself, um, you know, not? not listening to Edna, not liking so to his well. dad, not fun. listening even to Marty. Um, that, uh, and he wrote well, all this dialogue, and it's mm, great. Well, well, thank you. Crazy. Got no sense, but I don't care. I didn't write that line. <laughs> <laughs> But I don't care. Or oh, that one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Getting that I don't care song back in there. Up here? I was jump. very happy about that. Get a jump? <laughs> then what do you where I come when I want to think? Oh. When I want to be alone. Oh. <laughs> I was perfectly content drudging away in my dad's law office. You show up out of nowhere, get me all excited about inventing... He's finally starting to realize that Marty is not entirely uh, who he represents himself to be. Yeah. Oh, love the stone Einsteins. We originally were, th we were originally thinking that the Iron, the Iron Einsteins were going to actually be a permanent change to the Back to the Future uh, mythology. Uh, but then we got to this point and realized, hey, we could smash them and then get the proper animals restored. So we were happy that came on. my life for fun? that's how I get my kicks. AJ really enjoyed recording Marty being a complete jerk. Because uh, Marty really doesn't do that much ever. I mean, he, he's kind of sarcastic occasionally, but... You're saying I don't have guts? You? <laughs> Look at you. What do you know? A person like you? <laughs> and uh, and Emmett, really punch. <laughs> yeah, 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 punches like a girl. Well, he's much better at punching he's as He's a lover, not a fighter. <laughs> <laughs> he'll, get, he'll get his punch in in the next episode. Not young Emmett. That's what they said to Dr. Frankenstein? Yeah, and look what they accomplished. And of course, the epiphany that we've been talking about for episodes. First my father, then we, uh, we, we talked about how are we going to induce an epiphany, and we finally realized you don't induce an epiphany. An epiphany just happens. Yes. My ideas, do you hear me? It's basically, whoa. And there it is. It is. It's got, I've got it. Got what? Solution. My invention. I know how to make it work. The mental alignment meter? No, no, my airborne personal transport device. The rocket car? Not rockets, not rockets at all. That was my mistake. The basic idea was sound, but the propulsion system was unworkable. The lightning. The lightning. I'm amazed at how fast he can talk. <laughs> came to me all at once. Like like a bolt of lightning? Exactly. Static electricity. Super I and I static electricity powering the asynchronous oscillation of frictionless Sp plates inside Speaking the of inventions that head. shouldn't Emmett, work. Uh, <laughs> what are yeah. you talking about? This was this was all researched. Yeah. Science to be done. Actually, a lot of this is is researched from uh, Tesla's uh, experiments in uh, static electric powered levitating yeah. devices. Yeah. But that never happened to Tesla. Yeah. <laughs> That's why his machine never worked. Ah. <laughs> Get out of here. Your pants, they're stuck. Do something before we're We realized we wanted something very much like the stuck cuff uh, in the original movie. What did you say your name was again? Marty. Marty? Thanks. Don't mention it. For a while, we were going to actually give his full name. <laughs> yeah, we realized Stemmet that. get horribly confused by that. <laughs> but it will no doubt be intense. We'll have to harvest the filaments from all the light bulbs in my house. Your invention. <laughs> you think you can finish it before the end of the expo? Think? I've got to. My future depends on it. Then let's go. Of course, the oscillating plates will need to be calibrated precisely. And, then, and a happy ending. Once we've, again, we've, we've <laughs> solved all our problems once again. Oh, wait. The results could conceivably be catastrophic. Ah, who cares? My thought exactly. That's... Science should be messy and unpredictable, or else where's the fun of it? Which has always been Doc Thanks. Brown's philosophy, yeah, obviously. Except for this one. Not so much this one. Well, this one's a little bit... A little bit damaged. We originally uh, wanted this scene to be uh, Alt Doc uh, 
telling Edna that he's a time traveler usual, and offering evidence. Idea. But yeah. we just we walked back from that one. Well, yeah. though we get real we, close. We, we imply it. Yeah. I ended up getting all the sympathetic Edna. Yeah. Well, that's character. what makes her an interesting character. Yeah. She's you can't yeah. you can't be, you can't she's stay mad at her. Very long time. Maybe I should get a cat. There is just some. <laughs> there is something just very weird about old Alt Doc hanging out with his younger version of his wife and falling in love with her again. Well, but somehow, somehow it makes sense. Somehow it's psychologically yeah. plausible. Uh-oh. How much do you know about Harry Callahan? Oh, uh, Doc, don't do it. All right. Stay with us next time for the uh, DVD commentary on Back to the Future Episode 5, Out of Time. <laughs> <laughs>